All right, everyone, if you're not quite done setting yourself up, that's okay. I'm going to start to talk now in general. Um, so last time that we were here, what we did was we ended up uh, finally publishing a release version of our, of our app. So on my flash drive, I've got my SDCE1 release.apk. So this is the Android package file. It's the final compressed uh, copy of my project. The folder itself is about 25 to 30 megabytes, I think, the whole my SDCE project. Um, uh, 40 megabytes. And then the then it gets compressed down to this Android specific file, which is about one and a half megabytes. So the last thing that we had done was we started to set up our developer account. So if you were creating one like me, um, you ended up with a with a brand new Amazon developer account, um, which we'll continue to use at the moment. And uh, if you if you didn't get a chance to create one, you can still do so. Uh, or again, you don't have to do this for real. Um, but we I am going through the whole process, and I will be publishing this app. And remember, we can delete this later if we if we choose that we actually don't want it live. But it's a pretty good conceptual app and you'll be able to show legitimately and completely to friends and family that you have an app in the App Store. So uh, you should go then if you did create your account, your developers account last time, we should go back to it at Amazon. So open your web browser and we'll go back to developer.amazon.com When we were at Amazon Developer, then uh, we'll click on the second item, the Amazon App Store login. So click on Amazon App Store. This is at the developer.amazon.com. There's probably another direct link. Yeah, developer.amazon.com slash apps and services. I never remember that, so I just go to developer.amazon.com. This will ask you to sign in. So at the top right corner, you want to click sign in and then sign in with the with the same credentials from last time when you created your account. This time we are returning customers. I should say returning developer. But we're returning customers. Um, and so go ahead and sign in. That takes us to our to the screen where we left off last time. After the process of creating this developer's account, uh, we ended here. And there's plenty to look at here, which is what we'll spend most of the day looking at. And, uh, and of course, working on uh, finalizing to publish our app. So if we had any apps, they would be listed down here at the bottom. App sales and units, in-app sales, mobile ad earnings. So at a glance, we'd be able to see very quickly how many apps have, we, have people downloaded. This counts for the free ones and the paid ones. How many apps have been downloaded? Do we have in-app purchases? Uh, how much money are we making? Is the mobile ad platform earning us anything? Because as I said previously, there's several ways to make money off of your app. You can charge a flat fee, so 99 cents. I think the maximum you can you can do for a for a one-time fee for an Android app, I believe it's nine dollars and ninety-nine cents, maybe more. But um, we're so used to nowadays 99 cent apps and free apps that it's actually a bit difficult from what I've read statistically, to, to really make good money off of paid apps with a one-time upfront fee, you're going to make more money with those in-app purchases. You buy that game, let's say, and then you want more weapons, you want more levels, no problem, 99 cents. And suddenly you spent, you know, $30 on a game that originally was 99 cents or free. So there's that in-app purchase mechanism. And there's also the mobile ads, an ad that could appear at the bottom or the top of your app and some people could legitimately or accidentally click on that and when you when someone clicks you get revenue from that we won't quite get into that but all the documentation to set that up is within this developers portal we've got a button to add a new app which we'll do in a moment but on this screen uh, I'm gonna switch over to the apps and services at the top this is another screen where It'll tell us how many apps we've got. I have zero. And a variety of 
then sub tabs over here app testing service promotions etc so you've got the main navigation at the top and then several sub navigation elements so right here is where you would set things up read the documentation and see how to add cloud drive cloud services so for example on cloud drive the amazon cloud drive api the cloud drive lets you take advantage of an entire file storage platform without the hassle of building scaling, scaling or maintaining it yourself so that's the part that could conceivably be used for saving this data that your app generates right now whatever a person saves to your app gets saved only to the device it doesn't migrate just yet so there is this ability to use the the cloud drive in there uh, which of course is out of our scope but all the documentation is here developer forum a b testing have you heard of that term a b testing this is a simple way to run in-app experiments to create a better experience for your users basically testing option a testing option b and seeing which of the two works better so it looks like here they're a b n testing so as many variations as you'd like and you'll see that variation e was the best one that it gave you the best results uh, so you can tweak your app submit different versions of it submit different interactions in your app and then have Amazon keep track of that and which ones were more effective this is an important thing to do because we don't know exactly what will work until we until we try I teach a bunch of uh, other classes like the social media class and so in that social media class you also should engage in a B testing in that I'm going to tweet this with this picture, or I'm going to tweet this with this different text. So uploading different versions of things helps us figure out what is the most effective. Over on the reporting screen, this would show us, again, much more detail. How many app downloads um, by operating system and screen resolution and all that detail by country. Notice this goes on into detail, of course. Crash reports, earnings, reviews. People can review on Amazon. So you'll be able to see and, and deal with reviews there. All of this stuff can get complicated, so there's a huge support section. Very detailed. Just about everything is here under support. I think literally, this looks like a really long document. They're doing an SPA in Overdrive. Uh, I notice here that if you do go to support, you have this, a different menu now. It's getting started APIs and blog. So that's interesting that these, these other sections would, which, which would be useful, like the blog and all of that, you only get to it when you've gone into the support first. I don't see it on, as a top level here. documentation this is another way to look at it so this is all of the code uh, all of the explanation on how to use the Amazon specific code because this uh, we could set up our app that it taps into abilities of Amazon such as game circle if we had made a game and we want our high scores to be saved to their system so that we can have leaderboards and rewards and all of that cool stuff that would be their game circle we have Google Maps on our app but um, there's the Amazon version, and we can um, we can look at what ac access we have there. Marketing tips. And then settings would be the screen where we can come back to edit this this variety of information that we set up when we first created the account. So any questions on this overview of looking at the different screens? Okay, well, I've got an, I've got an app that's ready to be uploaded, my APK. And so I want to go through that process. So I'm, I'm going to return back to my apps and services screen. <clears throat> we have add new app, also the option here 
is it an Android app, a mobile web app, a PC and Mac app? So I could also publish my PC and Mac um, my apps here. And in theory, we have that ability to, to create this kind of app. We have Cordova. Remember, Cordova is cross-platform using our core HTML project and then in, in the SDKs we are able to then um, do Cordova platform add windows and now our project can be a, a windows app we'd have to re-engineer a little bit the CSS and such so that it fits better on a wide screen rather than a portrait but then ideally or theoretically we could also do Cordova platform add uh, OS 10 if we had the OS 10 SDK. So we could publish full, uh, full PC apps, PC and Mac apps through Amazon as well. But in any event, I'm going to click on Add New App. It'll just ask you that there. Um, little preview, Android services available for Android phones and tablets, including Kindle Fire, if you go with mobile web services for web apps for mobile optimized websites on Kindle Fire and select Android devices, I have to educate myself a little bit more. What's the big difference or what's the big benefit of going that way? But uh, we're going to use Android. And then here, ser uh, services available for desktop based PC or Mac applications. So we'll keep it on the Android. Next. We've got some fields to fill in here. What's our app title, which is required, what's our category required, and a few other items. So if you are following along to this point, I, I would like to see that you publish your app. It's not required, but if you are able to publish it, very good. And what you want to do is put your last name, just to differentiate it from the rest of your classmates. And then we've been calling this the My SDCE app, so that, that'll be fine. App SKU or SKU, that's the uh, stock keeping unit. That's a completely optional, made up keyword or code that differentiates this app from your other apps. This works more for, let's say, I've got a clothing store and I'm going to sell different versions of a shirt. So I need to keep track of what the different versions are, the variations, because I've got perhaps a red shirt and a black shirt and a yellow shirt, and then large, medium, and small, men and women's, etc. So I need some sort of code, some sort of skew to keep track of them. This is optional. So if we were doing something like my SDCE-01, so this would be one app with this particular SKU, I could do something else like, um, let's say this is the Android version, so I could do a and dash my S01. So any sort of code that I want to make up that will make sense to me, um, I can add here. And so I've got, if I've got multiple Android apps, I put a and d at the beginning. This is the My SDCE app, so MS. And then um, this is the first app of that. So I won't add one. I won't add a, an, a SKU, actually, but that's what that is. If you've got some way to keep track of your different apps, that's what the SKU is for. And it's optional. Then we've got Category, uh, which is where does your app fit in? What category does it fit into? So taking a quick look, you'll probably find the app that, or the category that your app fits into. Mine, uh, I will put education. This is an educational app. In a sense, it's informational. Do we have informational? No. Education. Then, okay, what uh, subject? History, language, etc. I'm going to do other. When we created the account, we uh, had a spot where it asked us to add contact information as a developer. So it's saying, use that default contact info, which probably you do, or if you need to have different contact information for this particular app, 
you can select that and then of course change it. So I'll save this part. And then now this takes me to uh, back to the screen here where I've got my current app that I'm working on and then these, these different um, uh, screens of information for this app and then tabs for this app. What I want to do is get green check marks for all of these tabs. Once I do that, I'm ready to publish. I'm ready to publish my app. So I'm going to skip for a moment um, a few of them, but notice here there's the app title that I filled in. I didn't fill in a SKU. It gives me a version ID. I can't uh, pick my own. I, Amazon does it for me. Application key. This is my unique key for this particular app uh, and its education and the other fields. So that's under general, that's one green check mark. I need to do some more. But I'm going to skip over to the binary files, the last tab here. You don't have to do it in order, you just have to get them all green, binary files. So the first button here, which is actually confusing, save and add binary. So I'm going to tell you right now, we can upload different versions of our app. We can upload a version where it's optimized for Android 4 and up. Now we can upload an APK that's optimized for Android 2X. So we can save then the Android 4X version of our app and then add one for the 2.X. And then the person that visits on an Android 5 device will get the right one. And the person that visits on the Android 2 device will get their correct one. We didn't set ourselves up that way. We remember we use that device info Cordova trick to check what version of Android do we have and then hide features that are not compatible with older versions of Android. This could have been another way too. Add different ver different APKs for, for people that want a specific version. So usually we don't click that unless we know what we're doing. Apply Amazon DRM. Protect your app from unauthorized use. Without DRM your app can be used without restrictions by any user. They say yes, recommended, and then it's up to you to decide what you want to do here. So DRM is, the, is digital rights management, and basically it puts copy protection onto your apps. So just like uh, you can't easily copy a DVD, you can't easily copy a CD, whatever, um, it's supposed to lock down that, that content, that app and such, um, so for unauthorized use. If you say yes, then you'll have that protection. If you put no, then in theory what people could do is get a copy of your APK, which is like when someone installs it on their device, and if they know what they're doing, extract it from the operating system, and then they can then give it away. So if you're selling an app and you don't put DRM, you could be losing money there, because then anyone can share your app without having to legally acquire it from Amazon. So it's up to you to decide what you'd like to do there, even with your free apps. If philosophically you're against DRM, then you can decide what to do there, and either one of those will be fine for you to check on. I will leave the default. Then we can drag and drop. You can either click that or drag your APK file into that little square, and that's uploading our file. Notice the maximum size here of 150 megabytes. If it's more than 150 megabytes, like a game or an app full of video or something, you would have to upload it via SFTP. And the instructions are going to be listed there. So there's my APK. I'm going to grab it and drag it and drop it into the, the little uh, square. So then it sees that uh, I uploaded my SDC1 release. It shows the package or the ID name. Just confirming that. That looks good. Version code, uh, mine says 10. Shouldn't say 10, it should say 1. Or did it just put an extra 0 there for some reason? Let me double check. Hmm. 
No, I guess it adds an extra version number, uh, an extra digit or something. Because uh, I do have Android version code 1. I don't know why Amazon is saying 10, and I don't recall seeing that on previous classes. If anyone else is following along at this point, did anyone also get a version 10? You got version 10 also? Okay. Pretty odd. Version name. That's the last save date. That's fine. The app is 1 meg. device support so this this shows that this applies that our app will be accessible to a variety of devices Amazon Fire phones and tablets um, all 11 versions of Amazon tablets Amazon Fire TV well we never really targeted our app for Amazon TV so it's excluded and then non Amazon Android devices based on our manifest our XML file so that just basically means you know Samsung Galaxy this and that Motorola whatever LG this and that so Compatible with just about every device, except for two. Two out of 207 is not so bad. We can go and edit the, the, the supported devices and say we don't want our app available on a certain device. We could do that, but it doesn't make much sense to limit your app if, it's, if it does work with different devices. Right now, uh, my app only supports English, but if we do add globalization features through Cordova, then we can target different languages. There's a required check mark here. There's no way around it. If you do want to publish your app, you have to check this. Basically, it's saying, I certify this app may be imported to and exported from the US and all other countries and regions in which we operate our program or which I, you've authorized sales to end user, etc. So basically, saying, yes, we are allowing Amazon to import and export our app. To the US and other countries. Yes, I want my app visible in Italy. Amazon Maps redirection. Amazon's devices do not support the Google Maps API. However, the Amazon Maps API provides interface parity with the Google Maps version 1 API. So basically we've got Google Maps in our app. Technically, if a person downloaded our app on their Kindle Fire or whatever, it doesn't have Google Maps. It has Amazon Maps. But they provide a platform that is in parity, it's one-to-one, -one. so whatever Google code applies in Amazon code, basically. So here we're saying, yes, translate that, or else our map might not work. Binary alias. This is used to distinguish between multiple binary files. Again, if we've got a version for Android 5x, a version for 4x and 2x, we can name them differently. This is required, but it can be anything you want, anything that makes sense. Any optional testing instructions for, for the Amazon system to, to test? Don't really need anything there, so again, don't click Save and Add Binary. That's to add now my other APK file. You just want to click the regular Save at the bottom. So now I've got the, I got another green check mark. That's all of that information there. If I wanted to edit something, I made a mistake, I can go back to edit. So any questions on this screen? Okay, I'm going to work backwards a little bit. Content rating tab. So we have to say none, moderate, or strong in these fields. Just like a movie uh, it could be PG-13 and it's got this uh, objectionable material or that, we need to, this is all required, we need to say which of these levels does our app have. And uh, just like many other concepts, uh, this is um, subjective. For some people something might be moderate and some for the same thing for some other people it might be strong. But let's see what our app has. How much violence does our app have? None. 
How much cartoon violence? None. How much drugs? None. Nudity? I don't think so. Intolerance? Nope. Profanity? Nope. And then we've got academic. This application is for educational purposes. Yes. Additional. Account creation or other personal information collected. This is what I'm saying about this being subjective. Are we creating any accounts? No. Are we collecting any information? Personal information? Kind of. We ask for their name. The person can type in their name and it will uh, put their name in our app. So how would you say that here? You know, you could err on the side of caution and say, yes, personal information is being collected, their first name. Um, there's no kind of wiggle room to explain yourself, really. It's either that yes, it's collected, or no, it's not. So if you put no, and again, if the Amazon team tests the app and says, wait a minute, you are collecting user information, kind of, that could get you a letter that says, please fix it. Worst case scenario, they deactivate your app. Who knows? So I'm going to say, just on the side of error, uh, erring on the side of caution, I'm going to say yes, some personal information is collected. Are there advertisements? No. Is your app directed primarily at kids under age 13? Nope. You have to be at least, I believe you have to be at least 18 to take classes here. Is there any gambling? No. Location detection or location-based services? Yes, we've got that map. That map collects a person's location. User-generated content or user-to-user -user communication? What would you say? Well, let's back up. What's user-generated content? Something that the person creates on an app. They are doing that. They are adding to our class list. Remember that class list that we've got set up? They're adding their class, the instructor, the title, etc. They are generating content. Notice it's covering both. Or user-to-user -user communication. No, we don't have that. That would be like a social network, but we are having the user generate content, so I'd say yes. Privacy policy here, this field um, is optional. I don't see the little asterisk but I do recommend that you have a privacy policy and what this is asking for is a web address for people to look at. So this would be one of these things that you'd be best served looking up um, Android app privacy policy template or sample or generator looking up some, uh, some sample to use with with your project. I'm going to, to give you a freebie here. Um, if you look at our company's privacy policy, it's pretty short and to the point. PMDinteractive.com slash privacy. You can copy and paste this and modify it to your needs. Make sure you read it and change what you need, of course. But this is a very basic app policy. And so it talks about this is for entertainment purposes. In no event shall PMD Interactive or our suppliers be liable for lost profits of any special blah blah blah. So it's a pretty simple CYA uh, type of uh, policy. Um, always not holding you liable for a variety of things. And so if you have something like that, that uh, will make your app more legit legitimate, especially if you're collecting data from the user. So I'm not saying link to our privacy policy, that won't work. What I'm saying is look at that, copy it, put it on your own server or Facebook or somewhere, and then on the address here, add your address. And you can get inspiration from any number of template generators or samples online.
right, so then I can click Save. Oops, I missed that one. So make sure you check them all as appropriate. Click Save. And now I've got another check. I'm going to jump now back to availability and pricing. Where would you like this app to be available? in all countries and regions where Amazon sells apps only in the following countries and regions so you can region lock your your app to so say only publish it in Antarctica that's funny all of those poor scientists bored down there so I'm gonna say all countries are you charging for this app no this is a free app yes my price is so um, I believe what the policy of Amazon is is that if you have a free app you cannot change it to a paid app so that would be sort of bait and switch that it was free but then now it's not um, you can do the opposite though you can start with a paid app 99 cents and then make it free but then you can't put it back to paid you can have deals and such where you reduce the price temporarily. But here you, you want to decide is it free or are you are you going to set a price? I'm going to say this one is free. Has this app already been released, such as on Google Play, the Apple App Store, etc.? No, this is the first time this is going to be released. And you can write, yes, this was already available on this other App Store on this date. The reason they asked for that is because, well, they obviously, Amazon obviously wants to promote their App Store as opposed to Google's. So if you first release your apps on, on Amazon, you could get um, a special uh, spotlight. You can get a boost uh, when someone has their Kindle or, or, or whatever and they go to their app store and you see all, all of those featured apps and such. That's one way that you can be considered for getting a featured spot if you publish your apps to, to Amazon first. Probably somewhere in the documentation it'll probably say that if you publish first and then maybe there's a little embargo little window where first it's only available on on Amazon maybe for like two weeks I don't know and then after that then you publish it elsewhere and within those two weeks you could get the the spotlight treatment but I will say has this been published already nope this is the first time we can publish this on a schedule so if we leave it empty it'll be published as soon as it's approved if we put uh, a schedule then it'll be processed and then published at a certain point. So the thing is, um, backing up a moment, if we were releasing our app on the, on, on the, on the Apple App Store, um, they are what is often known as a walled garden, in that you release your app there, or you, you upload your app there, you do all of this setup, you release the app, then supposedly they look at your app in detail and test it and see if there's any security issues and secret features and such and then they approve you and then your app is available to everyone on iOS or they test it, something's wrong and then they don't approve you and throughout the years of, of the Apple App Store there have been both sides of the of the coin in that people publish to Apple and it publishes right away no problems and some people that say they've spent thousands of dollars to develop their app and they're rejected over and over. So there's that both sides of it. And so Apple is trying to create then a curated experience, a walled garden, that in theory the apps available on their app store are supposed to be the best and most interesting and all of that. But um, things do slip through. Does anyone remember that old classic Shake the Baby app on, app, on, on the app store? On, on uh, Shake the Baby. This was a game where you had this app, you had a little baby, and then it was happy, and then it, it would start to cry. And the way you would quiet it down is you would shake it. You would shake your app, shake your phone, and then the baby would quiet down. And then you kept doing it and doing it, and eventually little crosses appeared on the baby's eyes. <laughs> so that got through the app store, and it caused a commotion. So what I'm saying is, 
yeah, what I'm saying is that shouldn't have been published, but it got published because lots of people are, are uh, publishing to the App Store, but there's a gatekeeper, supposedly. Uh, on the other side of that is Google Play, the official Google App Store. Google Play is completely like that. The wall is broken. That means anyone can publish anything they want, and it'll be, and it'll be available, no problem. Then it's up to the community to click Report the App to click the button, report that app. And then when people report it, then Google Play could take it down. They'll probably move at some point more toward a curated experience like Apple, probably not as draconian, but definitely more controlled now that Android has the larger market share. Um, and then kind of in the middle, the, from between the free-for-all of classic Google Play and the lockdown of Apple, is Amazon App Store. Anyone can create a free developer account here. Anyone can upload their app, but they are still going to test it a little bit. Mostly that it's compatible, maybe a little bit about content and such. But most apps are going to get through no problem. And then of course you can report the app. People can report the app if it's a bad app. So this is why it says here. Um, leaving this blank will make the app available after it has been approved. So there is going to be an approval process. Usually when we've done this previously, we've managed to do it on a Tuesday, on, a, on other classes. We do this at the very end of the day on Tuesday when we've got the four weeks to work with. We publish it on a Tuesday and when we come back, the people that publish it on Tuesday, their app is ready. Usually one day at the most later, just a few hours for some people. So if we are able to publish it now, we'll see that we'll see if our app is available by the end of the time we leave, but it will be available as soon as it's approved. Would you like to be part of the free app of the day? Um, so if you've got a paid app, you might have your app uh, be set up as free for one day. So it's okay for Amazon themselves to make your app free for a moment and then jack the price up. But it's not okay for you to do that. So if you'd like to be part of that, click yes. That might get you more downloads and, and then that might get you, after the sale is over, more, more downloads after that. Word of mouth. Actually, I didn't change anything here, but you should still save. And so it's free for all territories, marketplaces. Let's look at description. This is similar to save and add a binary where we can have different versions of our APK file. We can have different translations for the App Store listing. So even though my app is currently only in English, technically I can make a description in English and Spanish and Italian and Hebrew and Russian and etc. So those different app stores will see it in their language. But then they might be disappointed when they download the app and it's not in Russian. So what I'm saying is when we fill this in here, don't click Save and Add Translation unless you are going to translate it to another language. We're going to click the plain old Save. So this has a bunch of requirements. Display title, that's what's going to display on the Amazon when someone searches on Amazon. Short description of up to 1,200 characters, long description of up to 400, product features in bullet points, and keywords. So short description. Let's say simply the unofficial San Diego Continuing Education app. Check the latest classes. save your schedule. So a quick snippet what your app is about. Obviously the app does a variety of things. We can add that to the long description. So we can sometimes a person would see the short description, sometimes they would see the long description, sometimes both. Maybe to cover the bases I would start the description the same way the long description and then add to it. Then I could say 
SDCE offers a variety of classes for free. Keep up to date with them with our app and blah 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 up to 4,000 characters. Just something that makes sense. Product feature bullets, three to five concise app features, each on its each on a new line. These product features will appear on Amazon.com. Okay, so we're gonna say um, personalization. Pers personalization. We're gonna say that it's got um, um, turn by turn directions to campus. What else would you say? How would you word it? Because our app can also save a schedule like I've got there. Share on social media. So off the top of my head, those are some of the big things that this app does. You can add more to that, three to five, like it says. And those are all required. This is optional, but I'm going to say this is required. Keywords. Search terms used to increase the discoverability of your app. Use comma or white spaces to separate your terms. So what I want to do here is some, say some keywords. It doesn't tell me how many, uh, but I want to use some keywords so that when people search, what are some keywords that, that explain our app and put yourself in the shoes of your, of your users, what might they be searching for? So let's say college. Notice it says, this is kind of weird. I wish they would change this. Use commas or white space to separate your terms. So I'm thinking of college classes as one term, but technically that would be two terms, which might not be a big deal, but if you put it in quotes, that's one term. People might search for college classes. Comma. I like to do the commas. Uh, college classes, education, free classes, San Diego, obviously, this, this might, these might be great classes, but if someone's living in New York, why would they care? College classes, education, free classes, San Diego. Um, you can always add more later. So here's someone, here's some, here's a few that will, um, uh, that will help us. So then click the click the yellow save button, not the save translation. Save plain old save. And then we just need one more green check mark. Images and multimedia. This will take us a little bit longer. We'll look at an overview, we'll take a break, then we'll actually do this. This is now the the wrapping for your app. This is the icing on the cake. This is this is how we entice people to download our app. This is how we preview to people what the app is. Even if it's a free app, people might not care to download it. So this is a form of uh, marketing. Just like maybe um, you see a billboard about something and it convinces you, you read a tweet about something and it convinces you, we want to convince people to download our app. This is a form of marketing, so we're going to put our best foot forward about what our app is. Uh, so we'll upload an icon in a moment, the small and large. We need to generate screenshots. Um, we can do it two ways. 
Uh, I'm going to show you both ways. Those are required. Amazon TV, well, we never really targeted our app for TV, so I'm going to skip that. Promotional image is recommended, but we'll talk about creating one. And it's telling us what dimensions and so forth, so this is a horizontal image. This one's optional, video, and obviously more complicated, but it's nice to see a video, a little teaser, 10 seconds, 30 seconds, whatever. It doesn't have to be a five-minute video about your app. Uh, I'll show you examples and such. But this is what we're in for next. This is this um, artistic aspect of our app because we spend all of this time coding. Most of, the, most of the time in these three classes, we spent a lot of time coding. And uh, you might have a variety of skill levels in coding and a familiarity and a comfortability in it. But then we also have to do this graphical stuff. And maybe a lot of us are not that graphics oriented. So um, we'll take our break. When we come back, we'll start to develop some of these apps. Then we'll have all the green check marks. We'll save and actually publish our app for real and then talk about what else is required about this whole process. So at 6.56, we'll be back at 7.06.